Good afternoon, folks. Uh, this is Dennis Connolly, along with our producer and program director, Laddie Chapman, uh, for Access Door County, your window to entertainment and arts in lovely Door County. Um, we're having the privilege and honor this afternoon um, of uh, talking with, interviewing uh, one of the local celebrities, um, one of the fine artists that we have here in Dora County, uh, Patrice uh, Procopio, and she has been coming to Dora County for a long time and is now a permanent fixture here. And she's going to share with us a lot of thoughts, but we want to... Uh, First, introduce Patrice. Patrice, uh, meet everyone out there. <laughs> Hello. Yes. Welcome to my home and studio Good. here. <laughs> Wonderful. And thank you for welcoming us. Uh, Patrice, first of all, um, your connection with art and your journey in the world of art. You started out, um, were, were you always as a young girl prone to be artistic? Uh, yes, very much. Um, I was fortunate enough to go to a four-room country school in western Iowa when I grew up. And a friend of the family's was a teacher. And so when I was in kindergarten, she came to that school to take care of my brother and myself. So I had her for several years. And she had always told my parents if I continued drawing the way I did at that young age, by about 12 or 13, they were pretty sure that's what I would always be doing, that I had talent. So I had a mentor in first kindergarten and first grade. Isn't that a wonderful and, experience? And um, I remember being in another classroom where I had another teacher who was also a mentor. She's the one that really introduced me to teaching, which I have all my summer jobs growing up were, were teaching since I was 13 on. And um, she, I remember her calling in my kindergarten teacher, the front of the family, oh, look what she just did. So there was always that um, support. And also being in a small community, I sort of did anything that was with art. I was the one that had that that talent. Whether I was great or not at it, I got experience doing a lot of different kinds of things in a small town. You were the creative entity mm -hmm. of, of of your community. Yeah, 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 and definitely. Being known as such, perhaps the the. Uh, identity fed on itself. It really did. I, at the library, they had old paintings that were falling apart. They wanted somebody to reconstruct and repaint them. So, you know, I did those sort of things, community. They wanted to build a, um, a center for, it was like a sports center. Well, I got to do the architectural drawings for them. My Even I was too goodness. young to know that. But it was just sort of, you know, anything that needed some sort of rendering or visualization of, I, I was fortunate enough to just have that in my so, lab. So, you know, most of us, think of artists evolving from urban communities, uh, being bombarded with the arts, being around museums and galleries. Mm. It was, uh, you know, my, I was very fortunate. Um, my home was full of that. I was raised on a 160 acre, very typical family farm. Um, my mother played piano, so I played piano. So music was a part of it. My mother sewed, I learned to sew, and I think I learned my colors sitting under that uh -huh. sewing machine. Um, when my father would sell the cattle, um, we would take them to Omaha, and of course there's the Jocelyn Art Museum. So once a year in the summer, that was the treat to get to go, and so I was like a sponge with all of this. I knew very little about art uh, in the sense of how it, the, the mechanics and the business end of it, but I was very much surrounded by the beauty of nature. I live in a very beautiful part of southwestern Iowa, the nation so, about in a river valley. So that yeah, love, the beauty, yeah. my, my parents, you know, it, it was all there. Parent support, community oh, yeah. uh, support, and, uh, yeah. and an innate uh, ability yeah. that yeah. was God-given. It was a wonderful uh, combination. I had a very wonderful childhood marvelous. growing up with all, all that experience. So from, yeah. from uh, you know, Iowa has lost an awful lot of just incredibly great people. So what was your journey... <laughs> <laughs> uh, like leaving Iowa, your your art education, other yeah. educational well, things. Well, um, uh, my high school only had two years of art, so I had to piece together. And University of Nebraska, which doesn't have much of an art department, did have a correspondence course. So I finished out high school oh with that. So a lot of it was on my own at that younger point. I did go to Drake University in Des Moines, and I pursued teaching, art history, and the painting. As the th I had three majors at that point. You had to be a jack of all trades to make a living in this, this business, and I loved it all. And then I was fortunate enough to get a fellowship to Madison. So I did my, my master's work 
here in Wisconsin State in the Midwest nearby doing that. And I'd spent a lot of my life up north going fishing to Minnesota, vacations in the summer, family trips, Minnesota and Wisconsin. So I really fell in love with the state at that point. Um, upon graduation, I went out east and lived in Vermont, and I did the gallery circuit of New England. Um, shows at Dartmouth University of Vermont, one-woman shows, group shows, um, a lot of state shows. I mean, it was it was a really good opportunity to build up the resume out there. Marvelous, yeah. <clears throat> and it was it was really great. But I love the Midwest, and yes. was fortunate enough to come back to Milwaukee. So I got back to Wisconsin again, and. Um, has spent my life loving the outdoors of the state and being blessed to have this home eventually on the water. We used to camp up here for years sure. and years, and my, my kids building, these are pictures of just down the beach when my son, who's now 29, is a little guy here, and, and my daughter, who's 24 now, um, we're down the beach, and this, my other younger daughter, um, the three of them just absolutely adored being here, and so about nine years ago, I got this home, and I'm full-time at this point here with a, a small small condo in Milwaukee Marvelous. to go back to. So I was loss is uh, our gain, <laughs> and uh, we're delighted you've made those moves, and uh, your evolution is certainly uh, a very interesting one. Um, so how did, how did you, you said you camped as a young person up in mm -hmm. Door County, how mm -hmm. did you... Um, how, how did that all evolve? You're here now permanently. I'm here now permanently. We, um, we, I mean, Door County was always our favorite. So we would come in the winter when the kids had breaks and come up as much as possible in the summer camping. So we started with a big blue tent, went to a Jayco, nice <laughs> pop-up camper. And then at the point where the children were so busy, it was hard to schedule those things. So we got a home and felt we could just come Marvelous. when we were able to. So for nine years, my children, all of their friends, the relatives, everyone, it's open house to come. You know, come enjoy this beautiful, beautiful beach. And but we'd traveled the U.S. a lot with the camping before, so we were used to going to the beaches on the East Coast. And this is this is way better. Yeah. <laughs> it's very special. So your here. creativity uh, stems not only in uh, from is not only rooted in your fine artwork, mm -hmm. but also in the experience of camping, which I, much, I know has much. to be, you have to be creative to, uh, <laughs> to camp. make all yeah, work. Yeah, and I family. also, I guess um, my fun reading growing up, uh, after college, I did a lot of um, botany, biology, so forth, so I did, I taught nature studies, oh. I've developed uh, prairies and nature study curriculums for elementary school through fifth grade, um, organized a lot of events over the years, you know, mm -hmm. through that venue, and of course taking my kids and teaching them. Mm -hmm. What, um, besides the creativity itself, mm -hmm. What aspects of teaching or sharing your artwork is most satisfying and fulfilling to you? Oh, gosh. Um, I think I've been fortunate that I didn't um, lock into a high school or college system. I always dealt with community art experiences. By doing that, I had from the youngest to the oldest, you know, all ages. Um, I don't, I'm not a real huge believer of art classes for kids at too young of an age. I, I'm much... I feel it's more appropriate to have lots of materials and experience at home, at hand, easily, and surround the child by having it. I think those are the best ways to start. And I, I never taught anything more formal until kids between 9 to 12 of age. Then I would start doing a little perspective and some things. But I, I hate to close that natural spirit that can be brought out you know, in, in a, a less structured way with the kids. So I had a lot of fun, a lot of fun. I had, uh, not too long ago, one of my students who ended up being an architect came back and she was you know, thankful for the lessons I taught in the backyard when we were working Neat. at the home. Very and uh, My middle daughter, who is a, is a painter, also an artist, um, she learned her perspective by crawling around the corners of the house watching me teach. Um, I taught in Cedarburg, I've taught at any community venue over the years. And, um, now I have a, a wonderful group of students that are a little older than I am, so that retirement age, and they um, have always wanted to. Either a teacher had said something and they got turned off by a negative comment or something they thought was gorgeous, or they just never had the time. They've never always the been time. passionate wanting to do it. So I have students for the last 10 years. We started with drawing, and we've done colored pencil, ink. Um, they're up to oil right do you now. Do, um last work in Door County? Um, I haven't really taught formally up here. I've done that mostly in the Cedarburg and Milwaukee area. Yep, yep. I've kept 
up to this point as vacation because yeah. I was up here more on a vacation for a minute. But in the future, yeah, there's yeah, always that great. possibility. I Super. love the teaching. Well, but yeah, all, all ages. So that's, that's you know, I, I, as I said, I love to teach. I'm a farm girl from Iowa. I love the flowers, getting my finger in the soil. So that brought on the next, you know, the next phase of what I painted after so grad you were, school. So you were mentioning, Patrice, uh, the various media uh, that you deal with. Uh, of mm -hmm. course, we're going to enjoy some of your painting. Um, you do great photography, you do uh, wonderful drawing, um, and you shared with me some of the fabric um, also that you've mm -hmm. helped to develop, which yeah. really takes you in a whole uh, higher dimension of uh, technical-artwork uh, than most of us are familiar yeah. with. Um, we're going to have the joy of seeing some of... Uh, your very private and cozy studio in a little while. Mm -hmm. But uh, why don't we, uh, at this point, share some of the beauty of the wonderful aesthetic pieces that you've created. These were some of the first pieces I did of Door County. And as I said, I love outdoors hiking and taking the kids. So we were always in search of wildflowers. We have all sorts of stories about um, hairbells that are hairballs or whatever the kids used to make fun of me because we were always searching for the, that elusive flower. So Trillium was one of the, the better known ones here in Wisconsin and that comes out in the early spring. Yes. And I had photographed everywhere and came upon this um, scene with the stack stones over on Highway 42, just north of Beowulf. That's where this piece came from. And, and uh, we may mention, I think, in Dora County, it seems that the emergence of the trillium is sort of the bring, beginning of spring. It's yeah. sort of the sign that, yeah. that better things are going to come. <laughs> Life is coming back. Far, yes, yes. A different, yes. yes. I'll move this for you. Sure. And then I have another here. This is the yellow lady slippers, which are prevalent yep. everywhere. So this is in one of, the, one of the woods up here in this area. They can be very elusive at times. Yeah. And, uh, and so. the, uh, the one that took me the longest to do, it's not here at the home here, but um, the showy lady slipper. I went back three years to the same point, trying to get it at its peak, at its perfection, at its best point, and over by the ridges area is where I found very that Very delicate, one. lovely, delicate painting, beautiful composition, and the, the uh, exquisite muted background just makes your subject matter pop yeah. and draws us in. It's and I think, yeah, uh, really I think with fun. the flowers, I like to find, they're so beautiful to, to capture it at its most beautiful moment with these wildflowers, because you said they are elusive. They're very, very temporary, and they come and go so quickly, but I wanted to catch them at their most beautiful moment. Marvelous. With the light. And this was another fun one over at Peninsula Park on the way in, as you're heading into from the main entrance there. On the right-hand side, I found... Um, this picture of the columbine with forget-me-nots. They mm. both grow in the same soil, not necessarily all the time, but at this particular spot they did. And is that uh, a Queen Anne's lace uh, coming in as um, well? There's probably, yeah, that comes a little bit later in the summer is Queen Anne's lace, but these are all the forget-me-nots oh, and see. the deep shadows okay. of light roaming through. Marvelous. Again, the, 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 the brilliance of, uh, of, the, of the, ba the muted brilliance of the background, and yet... Um, the composition of the placement of your of your floral arrangement just uh, makes you feel that you're there. Gives you a, a real you can't really a lot of on, solace. Yeah, you can't improve on nature. It's all well, there. Sometimes comp, I, I leave out of, I leave out a few stems and a few sure. things, but the the information is there, and that's yes. what's so lovely to sit still for myself and. Um, Sort of a Zen moment to quietly reflect and really get into and understand each of these little spots. Well, with and your see very things. active life, those Zen moments must really be precious. <laughs> yes, they are. I think that's why I sit still and paint a lot. Yes. And this is a fun one. This isn't a very sit still picture, but this one um, was driving up uh, through Algoma, so nearby here, the bright red poppies in someone's yard. And actually, it was a storm blowing them. That's why they're so active at this moment. And because I did pause um, and photograph, and I had my mother and daughters in the car at that point, we made a mad dash for a bank shelter up here in Sturgeon Bay as the hail started pelting on us. Uh -huh. But I did get these lovely images. <laughs> well, fortunately. And they were so beautiful. Yeah, you captured just the right so, moment. Yeah, what I would do is in the summers, I, I would do is my kids were very patient. Oftentimes, some places... Uh, if I run gardens, the, the gardeners would allow my kids to go pick strawberries while I was photographing. and Marvelous. So the kids didn't find it. it was too tough to take you know, mom photographing all the time. But I took this piece and extended it further. Um, as I said, when I grew up, my mother 
uh, sewed beautifully and tailored. And so I grew up, I think I learned my colors basically from sitting under the sewing machine. So I had taken this image and this is actually not the original. This is a gicle print. So I, um, these others were originals I showed you previously. And it's hard pressed to tell the quality of a fine art gicle is, is wonderful. And I have um, several people, two in the Milwaukee area, that helped me to Bruce the prints. Um, just have another price point. So it's nice to share them with all kinds of people and, and so forth. The, um, the textiles then, I have a friend who did the printing. And I learned on the computer how to generate the repeat patterns by painting with Photoshop on the corner, you can see how it goes. And this is a silk charmeuse evening shawl. And you can feel the fabric, it's just delicious. It's just so oh, soft, silk is buttery. My, and I my, found my. A, a source in research and found a source where I could get the, um, the, the white silk that was to be printed in this process. And then I have um, places in New York wholesaling to get the beads and all the different things with it. I have purses and um, simple skirts, so pillows. wearable art. Wearable art is a whole nother. art as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they've been known to run wow. down tables at yes. fancy dinners before and Lovely. draped on. Marvelous. So. Brings us back to the garden in Algoma. Yeah. Marvelous. Yeah. Um, you have so such a wealth of material to share with us today. And we, we're not going to limit it to these four pieces. Um, you know, your, your fine artisticness, your warmth uh, um, is, is, a, is a great deal for us all to share. But we're going to go to your studio in a mm -hmm. minute. But let's, let's discuss... Uh, you were showing me this <laughs> wonderful puzzle before. Yeah, I'm really excited. Which... This came out this year, a little commercial. Um, actually, it's been sold in Canada and uh, Northwest U.S., but Mega Puzzles. I have um, Hadley House, which is a, a licensing company and also um, sells fine art prints for a number, long time in, in the country, has taken me on as one of their artists. So I have some other fun ways of So exposing. you did the initial painting. Yeah, I did a, the painting is the Peter Silka's Garden, which people in Door County might and know the family. And then the first the prototype you hand cut out all of the puzzle pieces is that correct <laughs> yes oh yes individually for everyone yes, yes. I did the, the painting seven. and they took it on yes. and, and did this for me so it's kind of fun to have another you know just another way of, of having your puzzles and plus I was a big puzzler growing up so, so it's doubly exciting folks that once again her her wonderful artwork at so many levels you know this can be a coffee table activity for <laughs> a couple of uh winter evenings uh, and so we can appreciate her art on the wall being worn or as a family activity on a coffee table. Um, brilliant and creative Patrice. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Um, what we'd like to do now is take a pause and um, I'm going to ask our viewing audience to join us in a few moments in Patrice's lovely uh, studio, which is a little tighter space than this. And we're going to just uh, very briefly discuss a few of the pieces uh, that would not work well taking off the wall, but I, we'd like everyone to uh, uh, see and appreciate those pieces. <music> As we find our way around this fine artist's um, home and studio, uh, we'd like to share some of the pieces that would not be quite so portable to show you as uh, we were sitting in the comfortable uh, comfort of our living room. Uh, this is a piece that we see on this wall. We can see the beauty of Lake Michigan uh, out the windows with the light coming toward us. And Patrice, could you describe what we're seeing in this incredibly complex piece? Yes, um, this is actually, um, as I call it, a sunset in the east. Um, it happened one uh, evening, very late in the day, while it was still light out, um, just before sunset. A tremendous storm came barreling down the coast over here, big dark clouds. So I photographed and photographed as it advanced towards us. And as it came to sunset, the light from the west shone over, reflected off the clouds, and we got this incredible fiery experience. The water turned orange underneath it. I mean, literally, this isn't made up. This is what we were viewing, and um, it's lovely enough because this is a regular occurrence here. We have 
beautiful sunsets over here in the east because of all the clouds. Uh, refraction and, like, and reflection. It's, yeah. yeah, exactly. And then also in the morning at 5.30 when we're up, you see the sun rises. So, uh, um, it's very blessed to live in this incredibly Indeed. beautiful beach. And I just and managed share to capture this, one. And share this moment which was so fleeting yeah. and yet almost as if nature gave us this uh, creative cacophony yeah. of, of, uh, of expression here, really it's, it's nice nicely to, captured. Thank you. The, you know, the camera works well because it will take those instantaneous, I can't paint that fast, right. so then I can You're take it back. You're not a quick plein air painter? I'm not a quick yeah. plein air painter. I can take it back to the studio and yes. put the hours of time in to make oh. this happen. Marvelous. And then over here you can see another um, totally different attitude down the beach, the beach here. This is um, the creek which comes out from Clark Lake, which cuts through Whitefish Dunes State Park, which is at the northern end. It was one of those days when the thick, heavy fog um, settles in and stays. You can see two little figures going down the beach here, but it was, it was just gorgeous. The, the waves have a personality that differs every day. The, the edge of the water, all of this in and out changes every, every time you take a walk down. Your composition uh, selection of, of viewing it from that perspective and the the amount of sky and the placement of the shoreline just gives greater drama and expression to it as well. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you very much. We're back now in this wonderful studio. It's cozy, yet it's so efficiently uh, set up. We have a computer for uh, capturing some of the images you've done. Even your mouse pad, I believe, is one of your creations. <laughs> yeah, it's a photograph and, of one of my paintings. <laughs> yes. And this is where you work and do most of your creative effort. Is that yes, right, yes, Patrice? Yes, it is. Um, we especially wanted to come up here, besides uh, having the honor of being here, to look at this panel of uh, smaller paintings, and they really seem to capture uh, the essence of beach life or the things that we love about beach yes. life here in Dora County, and particularly uh, along the dunes here. You're exactly and, right. That's what my attempt was. Yes. yes. And yes. So, um, as I've tried to articulate, perhaps you could describe each of these scenes to the viewers. Um, I started this two years ago, and I spent the summer, usually when I came up when my children were younger here, I would spend the summer drawing um, as contrast to the winter of painting in my studio. I wanted to refresh my energies and come back to the essence you know, of what it's all about underneath is the drawing. Um, so I decided, well, I didn't feel like drawing that summer, so I started to do paintings, and these were daily walks that I take. Um, that's the only job people have to do when I have them visit me, is to take a walk once, once a day down the beach. It's all anyone ever does if they come visit. That's the work quote of the day up here. So on my daily journey, I, I capsulize all the things that I thought that were the most special. I love the gulls and their patterns. There's nothing like the sound of a gull to let you know you are immediately at the beach. Um, and they, they're, just, they're just beautiful down here. So they chase the water in and out and soar in the sky. Um, of course, children on a beach. Um, this little girl, was, it was a foggy day, and she reminded me so much of my children when they were younger. She was drawing with a feather in the sands. Um, the time spent with my husband, reminds me, these are our chairs, and we have the dock down here at Whitefish, um, Whitefish Tunes. We have this nice uh, public dock, and of course a couple dogs down the beach, a lot of fun. This dog had a wonderful stick of great proportion. Perfectly placed for <laughs> yes. interest in the photo. It was, I know he held it very well. Yes. I had him, you know, he was very, very good at it. was a good model, but um, he wanted to play, so he kept switching around behind me and whacking me with this stuck, and he actually ended up breaking it, but after, not after I had already gotten these great pictures. The sailboats, and we have a couple sailboats ourselves to go out and enjoy that whole different perspective of being on the water. But, Again, at the edge, what happens? The sails come down at the end of the day. Um, children who had finished building um, the beach castles, they spent many, many hours. Again, this is a memory sort of thing. Um, relaxing and then on the, the beach. beach changes again yeah, for the next generation of children. Yeah, very yes. true, very true. And um, then my husband's sitting out and relaxing um, all the bright colors of the beach and the 
lovely cool shade of just uh, taking the time to pause and enjoy the outdoors. And again, here's a lovely quiet one of a couple taking a walk down the beach on a very different type of day. Um, it's just ever changing. You know, it, the, the water is such an enormous entity with huge personality that changes from morning to night and from day to day. So we're very fortunate. A, a great to be here. study with uh, all, the, all the various activities, inactivities, and all of it is very reflective. And so on eight panels, you've captured things that most of us savor about. Uh, progressing along the beach and enjoying the beach life. Yeah, enjoy here's sort of my, my 6 by 12 postcards <laughs> yes. of the beach. Yes. And then I took them, those were literally studies, and so I took them to a larger levels and did um, different images of the beach. Again, the two dogs here. And a location just a little bit different, having the seagulls near that water edge as it comes in and out. Um, During Patrice's creative process, she goes through many layers of creativity. And I'm seeing before us uh, her workplace, her easel. And if we could just very simply uh, tell the audience, the viewers, your creative process from yes. capturing a photograph to creation of the painting. Um, these, the photographs that I'm working from now are, are memory photographs. These are my two daughters when they were very young at the beach here. And um, there's just some memories I just want to keep, and, and they're best kept in oils. I love the process and the luminosity that comes. And underneath, I put a ground, and because there were a lot of cool blues, there's a lovely blue, Prussian blue here, and the Venetian red, which I typically use as a ground under my paintings. There's a lot of red, red tones under the beach, is up here under the sky area. And I will often pull them up. I have them archived online now, so I'll pull them up on my computer screen. Um, sometimes I don't work from photographs at all anymore. Um, at times I work from several photographs and piece them, especially with children, when I've done children portraiture. Kids move a lot, so we need to get those hands in place and have them hold still. Patrice, this has been a gift to all of us, uh, sharing time with you personally so glad you and, come. and viewing the incredible creativity and the warmth that you bring to our, to our Dora County, capturing uh, those, those savored moments and the beauty and way you compose it. So um, from somewhere obscure on Whitefish Bay Dunes Beach, <laughs> uh, the, the, lovely, uh, the lovely studio, uh, we want to thank you, Patrice. Thank you very much. Thank you much. so much for coming. I enjoyed Thanks. it very much.